How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video today. I'm going to teach you how you can have Linux installed in your computer. And it's, it's very simple and probably within five to 15 minutes, you can probably get Linux running and you can actually try it out for yourself. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open up your browser and you want to download a program called VirtualBox. Now, if you're on, it's, it's likely that you're on Windows or Mac, you're going to go to the website, you're going to go download and then yada, yada, download. It should be fairly simple, you know, installer, yada, yada and um, you know, windows.exe, and then you sort it out, download like a normal program. Now, obviously I'm on Linux, so the installation process is a little bit different for me, but once you have it, you should, should be able to load it up and you can see that you have a window, something like this, you can see. And um, obviously you won't have this, like this is already like a setup I already have, like a already have Linux, I already have like an Linux install here, but essentially this is called a virtual machine. Now, alongside this, you're gonna to have to download some version of Linux that you wanna try out. So in today's video, I'm just gonna download Ubuntu. Just keep it simple. Obviously, if you download something like, like you can get any version of Linux, you can try out any version and you know, whatever you feel like. Obviously though, if you're downloading something like Arch, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated to download, but it's still like with the Arch install script, it's pretty easy. But I'm just gonna go Ubuntu because it's just very simple. Um, but again, just pick out something that interests you or you could try out a whole bunch. And then for this one, I'm just going to go with the long-term support. And then, you know, it's like, thank you for downloading Ubuntu and it should be starting. Yeah. Should be starting. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to download the ISO and I'm just going to wait for it to download. It's going to take a while. Um, I'm not sure if Ubuntu, most of the time they'll offer like a torrent download. I would recommend that. Although if you've never done torrenting or anything it's safe like it's you know obviously this is legal but um it's a little, it's ever so slightly more complicated it really isn't and the downloads tend to be a little bit faster but i think for this like for demonstration purpose i'm just gonna wait for this to download and then i'll come back okay so we're back so as you can see it's downloaded and we just close this now so now what you're gonna do is you want to create a new a virtual machine or operating system. I'm just going to call this Ubuntu VM. And then it's going to say like, what folder do you want to have it in? So I have it in my documents folder. I have this folder called VM. Next, you're going to select the ISO. So I'm just going to find it right here. Here we have the ISO file. As you can see, it's already auto detected that it's Ubuntu, the type of Linux and all that. So I don't have to worry about that. But if you're doing something like Arch or I'm not even sure, like if you're doing a more obscure OS, then you might pick, but to be honest, I don't think, I don't know how much the type slash version, but if you can get it as close to as it like actually is, like as close to it, do it as possible. Like for example, I installed Endeavor OS and Endeavor OS is essentially just Arch with like extra features, but there isn't an Arch or there isn't an Endeavor OS here. So I just picked Arch. So from here, we're just going to click next and then it's just going to say unattended uh all right, i'm just going to do skip unattended installation um and next you're going to choose how much like hardware you want to give that's the only downside to this is that you kind of have to have a decent machine to like be able to run this properly if you do it very lightly like if you give like very little amount of resources it's going to be hard to properly judge so i'm just going to give it like actually a decent amount i'm going to give it like nearly 10 gigabytes and i'm just going to give it four cpus I'll probably make another video on how you can try out almost any type of like Linux, like OS or distro without having a good computer. You can try and you can try it out essentially with all your hardware. So be t stay tuned for that. Next is going to ask us to create a virtual disk and I'm just going to give it like 50 gigabytes roughly. I'll give it 50 gigabytes roughly. And um, yeah, I think that would be fine. Next, just summary, finished. And we're done. Now all we're going to do is literally just press start. It's going to run. Just gonna move my webcam over here and um before so obviously you see that's it's gonna say a try and install uh ubuntu and we're just gonna press actually i'm just gonna i'm just gonna mess with the size okay okay so now i've got this scaled up so it's gonna ask us do we want to try or install ubuntu and we're just gonna press yes i'm just gonna click enter and now it's gonna go through the loading process this might take a bit we'll see how long it takes and here we are fellas and as you can see they actually have a plethora of different languages you can choose. So let's say you speak um, Arabic, you can have it in Arabic. Let's say you speak, um, what's my language? What's the language I know? Hungarian or Italian, but you know, we'll, we'll just keep it in English. Just keep it in English. And um, 
obviously I don't want to properly install Ubuntu, but again, you could probably install Ubuntu onto the virtual machine and you could try it out. But again, there's a try, like you could like probably like mess around with it. Um, for now, I'm just going to try out Ubuntu. So, and technically, and again, technically, because there is that try option and this will have, this will have like, this will be on any distro that you choose because of that try option. Technically, what you can do is you can have a stick with the ISO flashed onto it, plug into your computer, and then just, again, boot into it. And then you can just try it out without actually having to install anything on your computer. So, again, this is Ubuntu. Um, we can do... Let's see what we can do. Display settings. Let's, like, change the, the wallpaper size a little bit. Let me... Um, it's quite low. Let me do 1920 by 1080. Okay. So, you can see... I also put it onto... So, it's got night light. It's got all the things that you'd actually want. It's got night light. Um, you can actually see, like, obviously I gave it, like, a decent amount of resources, so it actually runs pretty well, pretty smooth, considering the fact that it's a virtual machine. Again, if you have a weaker computer or you're allocating less resources than I did, then it's not guaranteed to have the same experience. So we have the option to actually, like, properly install Ubuntu. And again, it's, like, very, for most of it, if it's, like, a graphical install like this, it's going to be very straightforward what you're going to do. It's like, oh, English. Well, like, it would be the same as if you install like windows if you've ever had to install windows on like a fresh like laptop or like whatever uh again we also have the ubuntu software so you can just like it's kind of like the app store equivalent and basically every like single form of like linux distro has something like this because essentially this is actually a graphical interface for a package manager that's what it's called so if you've ever watched my videos um on arch linux we have pacman and literally it's as simple as like i'll show it to you right now as simple as like p like okay it'd be like pseudo pacman let me just make sure like it's big so it'd be like simple like pseudo pacman dash s and let's say i want to have firefox and it's as simple as that i type in my password does all the dependencies and then you can just download it like that and essentially this is the same thing um you could actually do it from the terminal it's like pseudo app to get or something like that i can't remember um but again here's like a more like user-friendly way so let's say yeah, and oh, you could install just Minecraft, like just like that. And it's literally just like the Java edition. Like, like it's like, no, like no funny business. It's literally just Minecraft, Spotify. And again, then you also have here, you can just update all. And again, you can also just like come to the updates and you can update packages like that. So it's a lot simpler than Windows. Because imagine like if you wanted to, let's say, update Minecraft or something on Windows, you'd actually usually have to update it yourself. Or like, you know, you usually have to update the packages or like the applications yourself. Whereas on Linux, you can just update everything like that as well. Like, for example, again, if I show you on my setup, if I want to update my entire system, I literally type in, I have a shortcut. So for me, it's actually this simple, but typically it would be sudo pacman syu, type in your password, and it will literally go through all the packages, all the applications you've downloaded, and you can just update everything. Obviously, you can see I haven't updated in a while, um, but it's as simple as that. And that's the kind of thing that you don't get in Windows. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You know, we have Libre Office Writer. So this is like, this would be like Google Docs or um, Microsoft Word, like the equivalent. And then also you can, also you can play around with GNOME. So this is a, like what would be called like GNOME. This is the GNOME desktop manager. So you can get a feel for it. I've actually never used GNOME before. So this is new for me as well. But you can see this is how like, it's kind of like, um is this what macOS is like? I'm not sure, but I think macOS has this kind of feature where you can just like see all your applications. Um, if we go to the settings, I noticed that I think the animations are off. I think it's all like optimized. Um, okay. We could put in dark mode, you can even change the color. So it doesn't need to be like that orange. Like that's like typical Ubuntu. I think of Ubuntu have the dark auto hide. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. So you could just have it auto hide when it's like pop it over. Again, if you don't like the dock on the left, this, I, I swear this is also like a very Ubuntu thing. Like, I don't know. So I think you can have it on bottom or like windows, um, or the right. I don't know why they don't have the top. That's the, I guess, because they have this, they have the other bar. So yeah, the settings again, it's pretty like, pretty basic, should be pretty like, should be pretty basic, should be pretty basic to like, just work around and like, you know, figure it out. Oh, change your background. You want to change it to this or something like, it's all pretty simple. And then if you actually install it, then you get a lot more control. And again, technically you don't even need to have this. Like you can just download a completely different desktop environment and there's no one stopping you. It's not like you're locked in, like, if it was like Mac OS or Windows, like you can't like, for example, like technically, um, it's not possible, but 
in a technical like standpoint on windows you could download like this environment but because you but the reason you can't is because it's all locked down so there's like no way you can um got a little calendar here uh pretty cool pretty cool i don't know why it breaks like that oh okay i don't know that was random as before it was just like okay that was random um keyboard layouts yeah, like literally everything like everything that you can imagine it's really as simple as that and you can see like i did that in like 10 minutes so so yeah i hope so yeah this is a very great way to like get a feel for linux and kind of like play around and again you can always just install it um to the vi like the virtual like desktop like you can actually like properly install it um and again it's not like it's installed like it's not going to overwrite your computer it's completely self-contained in the virtual machine any changes you make to it like it's a great way like i know a lot of people will download viruses they'll try viruses out on the virtual machine to like see how it works although maybe that's even a little bit risky but i know some like it is like but it tends to be pretty safe to do that so yeah, this is the way that i started getting into linux i installed linux mint if i remember correctly and then i was just trying it out just messing around and then i remember what i did is I installed Arch Linux, like I just tried it Arch Linux. I remember I failed that so many times. I had to like restart. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. And then I was download, like I downloaded KDE and I was literally just like on it. I was just like customizing it, just having fun. And then eventually I just installed it on my actual computer. I've been dual booting Windows and Arch Linux ever since, although I almost always use Arch Linux. I like very rarely go to Windows now. I very rarely go to Windows now. If you guys want to support the channel, just leave a like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.